players. Then we have uh, joining us Josh Cotton, Brian Santino, Ray Westing, Gary Ketchum, John Collins, Bill Baber, Lisa Rivet, Lori Dunlap, Deputy Kitty, and the Sheriff, and Deputy, uh, sorry, not Deputy Z. <laughs> What is your title? Chief Deputy. Oh, you are Chief Deputy. Chief Deputy for the day. Very good. So you can turn your radio down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Give me just one second. I need to look at my. Is that better? That is much better. Okay, I'd like to call the meeting of the county commissioners. Order, sustain, vote, immediately following a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Fiscal report. 
You have a fiscal report in front of you. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, just about a million dollars in the general fund and about half a million in the bank account at this point. So we still do, do not need to still kind of get cash flow wise. We do not need to pull any more from the TAM uh, at this point. Very good. Any questions for the fiscal? Very good. Just one. Go ahead, Jeff. I don't got anything for it. Commissioner Morrison, would you please read the foster care money proclamation? Whereas the family serving as the primary source of love, identity, self esteem, and support is the very foundation of our communities and our state, and whereas nationally there are more than 442,000 995 children and youth in foster care, 16,381 in Pennsylvania, and 13 in Warren County. And whereas all young people in foster care need a meaningful connection to someone who can be a support and lasting presence in their lives. And whereas foster, kinship, and adoptive families who open their hearts and homes to children whose family are in crisis play a vital role in helping children and families heal and reconnect, thereby launching young people into successful adulthood. And whereas dedicated foster families frequently adopt foster children, resulting in a greater need for more foster families. And whereas there are numerous individuals, public and private organizations, who work to increase public awareness of the needs of children in leaving foster care as well as the enduring and valuable contribution of foster parents and the foster care system is only as good as those who choose to be a part of it. Now, therefore, the commissioners of Warren County do hereby proclaim May as National Foster Care Month in Warren County and urge all citizens to come forward and do something positive that will change a lifetime for a young person in foster care. Thank you. Any commissioner comments? Comments from CYS? <coughs> We, uh, we appreciate all of the individuals who have decided to foster for us, and we are always looking for new foster parents. We have a beautiful display at the library, if anybody would like to stop by and see that, and then we'll be <coughs> a new campaign looking for foster parents who are willing to foster youth from 14 until 21, because that has become our greatest need. But we truly appreciate the individuals, past and current, who have fostered for us and have made a tremendous difference in the lives of the children that we had to remove from homes for short periods of time. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate uh, the work that you do at CIS and also the presentation on Monday. Thank you. So we hope that uh, the work gets out about the need for what, seven to 12 families. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a very good presentation on Monday. I hope some of the work gets out about it. Uh, next, Emergency Medical Services Week. Whereas Emergency Medical Services is a vital public service, and whereas the members of Emergency Medical Services teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury, Emergency Medical Service providers have traditionally served as the safety net of America's health care system. And whereas emergency medical services teams consist of emergency <coughs> physicians, emergency nurses, paramedics, emergency medical technicians, firefighters, educators, administrators, emergency medical responders, and others. Approximately two-thirds of all emergency medical services providers are volunteers. And whereas the members of emergency medical service teams, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing, continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills. Americans benefit daily from the knowledge and skills of these highly trained individuals. And whereas, it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical services providers by designating Emergency Medical Services Week. And whereas, injury prevention and the appropriate use of the EMS system will help reduce national health care costs. And now, therefore, we, the Commissioners of Warren County, in recognition of this event, do hereby proclaim the week of May 19th through the 25th 2019 as Medical Services Week and encourage the community to observe this week with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. I would simply add to this that the uh, emergency medical uh, services provide uh, much needed uh, 
programs to the community, and I would strongly encourage those that are not currently in the system to help out in some way. Um, you may not want, need to be an EMR or an EMT or something to help out. Uh, it's just as vital to do fundraising for your ambulance company, for your local fire department, etc. So uh, we can all use help with our chicken barbecues and donations. Uh, if uh, actually going out on calls is not uh, something you'd be able to do. Anything else from the commissioners? Good. Chair, I know you were long standing in the in the EMS. Did you want to say anything? No, I, I you, you hit the nail on the head. I I was involved in the fire service EMS when I was 14 years old. And I am a life member of Garland Fire Department. I served in numerous positions, including president and uh, assistant fire chief for seven years. Uh, it's kind of depressing to see the numbers and, and the EMS and fire service being what they are today. Uh, there is so, so much that is heaped on these organizations, uh, regulations, training, and etc. that it's, it's kind of disheartening to a, to a degree. <coughs> But with that being said, the sheriff's offices, we have tried to do our part. Uh, a couple years ago, I did a fundraiser with the civic groups to buy four ADDs, tourniquets for the deputies, and Narcan for the uh, drug overdose. Uh, with the generosity of those civic groups, we did, in probably two and a half weeks, we generated over $9,000. Uh, we purchased four ADDs. Tourniquets. All the deputies are trained in our camp, and our our role is, and, and we're being dispatched on a lot of cardiac arrests if the sheriff's car is out there. Um, we get there, we try to help, and turn it over to the fire EMS when they get there. I think that's a vital, uh, and one of the reasons why I want to do that is because we're in the outlying areas. We're down in Enterprise. We're down out uh, in Fair Lake. Out serving warrants, serving civil process. Plus, we have contracts with the Allegheny National Forest and the Corps of Engineers. So I felt that it was, it was important that, that we do our part. And thanks to the generosity of civic groups and individuals, it, it's really come full circle. Thank you. One that did remind me, by the way, that uh, in the list of all the various uh, as providers in the proclamation, uh, law enforcement officers are not one of them, although they are quite frequently there to help. And uh, the sheriff's office is a fine example of an agency that uh, many, many uh, local police are EMRs, from what I understand, but you are also uh, first aid certified and counselor in Narcan. So I'd like to, um, uh, if would add. All police officers in the Commonwealth, Pennsylvania Sheriff's deputies, yeah. and corrections officers are. Officers are all certified in CPR AED as required by law. Right. I'd like to add law enforcement to the list in this proclamation. Is that right? Very good. Uh, next, <coughs> National Skilled Nursing Week. Established by the Health, uh, excuse me, American Healthcare Association in 1967. And always beginning on Mother's Day, National Skilled Nursing Care Week, formerly known as National Nursing Home Week, provides an opportunity to recognize the role of skilled nursing care centers in caring for America's seniors and individuals with disabilities. Whereas nurses are a key component of the healthcare system and have an important role to play in people's lives by nature of their keen judgment, compassion, and clinical experience, and whereas nurses are trusted health professionals and committed to preserving and protecting our public health care system, and whereas nurses advocate on behalf of their patients for the environment that promotes safe patient care, dignity, and respect, and whereas nurses also have the right to work in an environment that promotes safety, respect, and dignity for the nurse. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Commission of Warren County, hereby proclaim the week of May 12th through the 18th, 2019, as National Skilled Nursing Care Week in Warren County. And be it further resolved that we urge all citizens to join in celebration and recognition of nurses and their unique ability to have a positive impact on the lives of those in their care. Any commissioner comments? Very good. Thank you. Commissioner Morrison, would you read the Relay for Life proclamation? Relay for Life Purple Out Day. Whereas Relay for Life is a life-changing 
event sponsored by the American Cancer Society that helps communities across the globe celebrate the lives of people who have battled cancer, remember loved ones lost, and fight back against the disease. And whereas one person can make a difference, which was evident with the story that began in Tacoma, Washington in the mid-1980s with Dr. Gordy Clack, a Tacoma colorectal surgeon who wanted to enhance the income of his local American Cancer Society office and show support for all his patients who had battled cancer. Dr. Clack decided to personally raise money for the fight to do something he enjoyed, running marathons. And whereas Dr. Clack's efforts during which he ran for 24 hours and raised $27,000 to fight cancer that first year, his vision has become a national event providing the opportunity for thousands of communities to come together to plan team relay events and other fundraising activities which are instrumental in helping the American Cancer Society save more lives and create more birthdays by helping more people stay well and get well. Now therefore be it resolved that we, the Commissioners of Warren County, hereby proclaim the 24th day of May 2019 as Purple Out Day for Relay for Life of Warren County. And now therefore be it resolved that we, the Commissioners of Warren County, hereby proclaim the time from 4 p.m on the 14th day of June, 2019, to 4 p.m. on the 15th day of June, 2019, to be Relay for Life, Colors of Cancer, 2019 day. And be it further resolved that all public officials, employees, and all the citizens of Warren County show our support by wearing purple clothing and or accessories on Purple Out Day, and by adorning purple bows and ribbons on buildings and cars in an effort to promote the mindset of thinking survivor and to support our fellow community members. We're proud and loud. Very good. Any commissioner comments? <coughs> so this time I would ask for a motion to approve the agenda, the minutes, the fiscal report, and the formal proclamation that's read. So moved. Jeff, are you there? I'll second. I will second that. Okay, Commissioner Everson seconds. Any discussion? Any public comment? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> There's no old business on the agenda. Uh, new sure. business. Okay. I'm sorry? Okay. Just be aware that there's a delay, so I probably support everything on the agenda. Okay, noted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Um, there's no old business, new business. Um, we'd like to first take the uh, book to tab. Um, I apologize. Let's go to the So, we're looking for the um, stormwater improvement project. Would you uh, please start us off? Good morning. Um, I'm asking the commissioners to award a contract today to Chivers Construction out of Fairview, Pennsylvania. We did on a CDBG funded project that will replace um, the stormwater system on Center Street in Bear Lake. It's on the hill. Uh, the stormwater has not really been contained for years and it's eroding the uh, roadway continually. There are some um, stormwater drains in place that are mostly deteriorated or mostly missing. So uh, this firm has been hired to come in and replace the stormwater system with some drains and inlets and a lot of varying sizes of PVC pipe. Um, and then next year we hope to be able to assist them with uh, repaving the road, roadway once the stormwater has been redirected and contained. They, they're, they're a little bitter. Uh, at $209,050. The other bid was by Clement Smith for $228,145. So I ask that the commissioners today award this bid so we can get this project rolling. Very good. Then I hear a motion to, to notice to award Shire's construction for the amount of $209,050. So moved. I'll go ahead and second. Second. Amendment, Commissioner Abelson seconds. Any discussion? Very good. Any public comment? Questions? 
We got all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Okay. Back to the first item. Uh, the point of transit authority receives a letter from Talk asking them to appoint Al Hendricks of Warren to the Talk Board. Do I hear that such a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. Jeff, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and second everything from here on, if that's all right. Um, okay. Next on the agenda is the um, MATP agreement. This is an annual agreement that we pass. Um, and then, by the way, why don't we just go ahead and take the uh, transit authority resolution that follows it uh, as one motion. So this would be a standard MATP agreement, assurance of compliance as well as the award to the talk in the amount of $37,000 to $37,025. So $37,025. Uh, so I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay. Is that a lower amount than last year? You know, it does seem a little bit. Lower. It is. Well, yeah. And Township maybe contributed? No, I think it was, I think the budget last year was it was just an over, it was, I think it was the same amount last year we actually paid. Okay. So this is the right amount, this is exactly the right amount for this year's it's budget. But I think last year's budget was just. You got correct. those numbers confirmed from when you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think your memory is correct. I do recall passing something that was in the 4,000 range. It was 37 something. All right, so the motion again is to accept the MATP agreement and assurance of compliance along with the wording certifying the funds to the transit authority. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I would count that as an aye. So the motion carries you now. Last thing on the uh, new business yeah. agenda is uh, <coughs> presentation. We'll start with a presentation from the Sheriff's Office. Uh, we have before us an agreement with Shallow Creek Kennels for a uh, canine service dog for the uh, Sheriff's Office. Uh, I submitted the agreement uh, after working with the district attorney, the chief county detective, uh, and the chiefs of police here in the county. The, the chiefs approved, the procedure was set up as the chiefs would have to approve it before it be sent to the community foundation. Uh, as you're aware, Conowago's K9 died here a year and a half ago. June. June. And that canine was was replaced. Uh, there, there was a discussion on whether there was enough work, or does the county would it be beneficial to the county to have a canine? <coughs> One of my thoughts was that with a lone canine uh, and handler, it's kind of unfair to that person to be on call 24 hours, 24 7, 365. Uh, with that being said, there were incidents where uh, one that comes to mind was, if you recall, a few years ago when they had the robbery incidents over in Pleasant Township, uh, the canine had been out and worked that situation. However, the individuals got away. Uh, later that night, <clears throat> the sheriff's deputies stopped and stole the one of the people who had gotten away uh, had stolen a vehicle from a private resident. And I was working at the, that evening, I was working in Colorado, working for Youngsville Borough. Uh, the call came out that they were headed toward Youngsville. It was on Main Street, it was on Four Lane. I went to Main Street. So it happens there was a sheriff's car that was getting fuel at Quickville. They seen the car go through, uh, wind up stopping the vehicle, the individual ran. The canine, Conalongo canine, couldn't come out. He'd already worked. The dogs get tired. They lose their effectiveness. So we called for a canine, nothing available. And as a result, the one individual stole a vehicle from Barnhart's lot in Buffalo. Uh, there have been other incidents where a canine is not available. Uh, I have with me today Tom Kibbe. Uh, Tom Kibbe, or Tom Kibbe, uh, Kibbe has been uh, chosen as the handler. He has done a lot of work. Uh, Chief Detective, Chief County Detective Zeibel has coordinated with the Community Foundation. 
after the, the Colorado Dog was, was, was replaced, the Community Foundation started a, or put money in an account, uh, and that amount was $30,000. And their, their wishes were to have a county dog, county canine. We have, uh, they have agreed to pay for the canine itself, the training, the cage, and I guess it's called a hot spot. It's a hot spot, it's a heat alarm for the car. Which, if an air conditioning needs to come on, it will come on, heat needs to come on, etc. Uh, this morning I got a call from uh, an individual. Last year the K9 project had a golf tournament, and my understanding it was extremely successful. She called me and they are going to include the county canine. So the monies that are raised will be split between Colorado and the county canine uh, program. <coughs> we feel that it's beneficial. I have uh, not only the chief county detective, but the uh, Jim Warden, who, who I feel, and he feels it would be beneficial to per periodically run a canine through the geo. It would also benefit in the schools. Uh, as it is right now, uh, if Officer Mike Water, we ask him to come in, and, and for these schools, it takes sometimes three or four canines. And we can't always uh, count on PSP. Uh, they have been extremely good to us, uh, but you know they have their assignments as well. Uh, I think this would be extremely beneficial. We're not asking to use any tax dollars. And the focus of the fundraising that I see and, and Tom, we have talked about it, is the, the funds are generated. I and mean, we've had people already call and say, hey, how do I donate? I didn't want to do anything on this until it came before the county commissioners. But the program, it would be twofold. Number one is to support the system. The vet care has already been donated. The food has already been donated. Uh, graphics for the vehicle have already been donated. And there's something else. Oh, my understanding talking to with the Commissioner's Association is they do not charge extra for a canine. However, if that were or we needed that, there's a vendor, there's a business, Walmart, who will pay for the insurance for that. That's all. And I, I don't know if you have anything else. I think you're pretty much covered. Like you said, no tax dollars are going to be spent. I've uh, worked with Officer Nice Walker in Conewago, so I know how the canine works. You know, as far as the fundraising, any funds, uh, any fundraising that's done from here on out will be collected and it will be split as far as the golf tournament. You know, I'm on the board for the uh, golf tournament, so we've been trying to get things prepared and uh, hopefully have it ready by summer. So I think uh, once we get it going, I think it should sell fun itself. Uh, being on the road, I know there's definitely a need for a canine. You know, I can think of Last night I could use one, put away great. And uh, like I said, I don't think it's fair to Officer Nice Warner 24 7 on call. You know, his phone ring off the hook and, you know, he does what he can. And like Sheriff said, uh, searching the school is going to take three or four guys, and that itself could take four or five hours. You know, they just had an incident in Beatty, you know, where they were looking for drugs, and uh, Officer Nice Warner and Nick were pretty wore out by the time they had up. So I think having another one on local, you know, so I can be on call and help him out when he. And, and one of the things that we want to accomplish too is to give back to the community foundation so that when Officer Dice Wander's dog it, it reaches its end of, end of uh, service, end of use, and the sheriff's office, that there will be funds there that can carry this program forward. I, I know that uh, Detective Zyvo, he, he's worked very, very, very hard to get this set up. Brent, right, is there anything you want to? Uh, I'll just add that the Community Foundation um, is, is a bundle of money that is through donations. We've also got a grant, if you would, um, hanging out there through the Ben Roethlisberger Foundation, the Steelers. Um, he has a canine fund that we've been kind of earmarked for some money there. We're waiting for that official um, transfer. Uh, the Community Foundation has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, in supporting this canine program, the, um, the, the, the publicity thereof. But the Community Foundation is, there's, there is a separate uh, entity monetarily with Conewango Township. The Community Foundation 
is going to be supporting, or basically the lion's share of the support of this proposal here with their approval and the canine board's approval um, through this channel. Very good. And yeah, we, we, we've had canines before, so it's not something we're not reinventing the wheel. Mm -hmm. We just, but my goal is to improve on the program we had before. In fact, you had just that too, the three. three. We had a bomb canine and, and two car canines. Very good. Um, so, to the extent that it's coming before the commissioner and board today, we have an agreement, which is a contract for services uh, in order to get a narcotics detection slash patrol police service dog. It has the agreement has been uh, reviewed by the solicitor? Of course, so the sheriff's office would be solely the entity that would deal with this, uh, since it's an agreement that has to come before us, and even though it has no cost to the county. Yeah. And the, the solicitor has asked for some changes to make, right. and those are being worked on as we speak. But I believe we can pass the agreement with the following amendments to it. At any time, department is listed, it would be changed to County of Warren. Signature lines would include the commissioners for execution. And the page, excuse me, the following clause on page five should be amended to say the department, aka County. Assume sole and complete responsibility and liability for any and all injuries that may be sustained by either the canines or handlers, which may occur during the training sessions to the extent they are caused by the negligence, gross negligence, or willful misconduct of the county or after the conclusion of the training sessions. I have, yeah, that, that's correct. That, that to the extent there was, there was, there, there was a full acceptance of responsibility in the, in the draft we were provided. And, we did a carve out to limit yeah. our exposure only to yes. false yes. that. I, I have one question actually. Uh, is Shallow Kennel, is Shallow Creek um, providing the canines while they're getting Yes. Yes. Okay. Shallow Creek, yeah. So I would, I would also ask for one more change. Mm -hmm. um, in Article 2, after uh, the sentence, after the sentence, sec, sentence where the contractor shall provide the pre training of one canine supplied by the contractor and the training of one. Handler chosen by the department, title to the canine shall pass at the execution of this yeah. agreement. Yeah. Yes. The canine will be a county asset. That's my point. And that's my point is because the, the agreement also asks for the uh, county to, to cover insurance. So I assume we need, I need it to be clear in the agreement yeah. that we own the dog when the contract yeah. is signed. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, so right. Is that, that's your understanding? With, if it's a canine, it becomes property of the county. Um, yes, I would say it's property of the county. But my understanding would be property of the county, basically with um, the ship would be the county if you guys are steering. Yes, yes, yes. I have a few questions. Sure. Uh, what if any additional labor costs do you see involved? The way we have done it in the past is that he is. He is assigned to the four to twelve show, so he will be given time to care of his dog. That way, it's not cure. There's not going to be any overtime occur. Uh, we have an agreement. We worked out an agreement with the district attorney that any seizures, money, etc., that the canine will get ten percent of any proceeds, and that will go into that fund. As far as overtime. We can adopt schedules. We we have that flexibility. Okay, I'm concerned. A little concerned there. And then insurance. How are we handling insurance? The insurance it is under the county policy. There is no additional cost for that. However, uh, we have Walmart has come forward and said that if need be, they will pay for the insurance per year. Right. Which I think was eight hundred and some dollars. <coughs> Tom will pay eight hundred dollars for the whole program. Right. Thank you. Very good. Any uh, any questions, Commissioner Agerson? Oh, <coughs> I don't have a uh, question of the fact that they just a few comments. Uh, one is that I lean toward the effort, Sheriff. I applaud for trying to you know initiate this program. Um, and I'd like to see it happen. I think that my concern more is that I would like uh, to, you know, 
I have been the sheriff's office and collaborate with the commissioner's office uh, and specifically with the fiscal department to do a work up in the document. You know, any of these that have been kind of generally been brought up, I'm only been aware of the program for a week or two. And I haven't had the time to do, you know, due diligence on researching what the, you know, the financial impact. I would also say that the commissioner's office has access to a variety of, uh, you know, people that we work with and also, you know, other resources to be used to help fund the program, make sure that it's sustainable. Um, you know, with any kind of program like this, I'd like to just, you know, feel good about the long term, uh, uh, you know, financial stability of the program. Uh, so my, I would be in favor, I'm not making a motion to table, but I would be in favor of tabling it for two weeks so that we do more due diligence, especially uh, those that are in the physical office, just to make sure we have all that stuff to the financial, uh, you know, rather than, uh, you know, but most of the information that I have is through casual conversation, and uh, I think it would be good to have that more of a detailed workup of how it's going to work long term. Does that make sense? Yes, but the sheriff would like to respond. I believe there is a time in this issue. Yes. Uh, if this is approved by the board, uh, Deputy Kibbe will be going Friday through the selectors' dock, and your, tra your training starts June 24th is the first day. Will be the 24th. And he's scheduled. They're holding that date for him, pending the payment from Community Foundation. So that's where, that's where we're at. And what today is May 8th. So if we did postpone until the 22nd, would that, that would not work, correct? Well, I, 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 he has to go select his dog, I meet his dog. And that's, that's the issue that we're facing. As far as the training, I don't know if that interferes. It wouldn't interfere with your training as long as the dog was picked up the training. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, have, I have another question. How do you feel about the Warren Foundation? Are they in agreement that they've created uh, some sort of a fund for this so that this would be long term? As uh, Commissioner Eggleston has shown some concern with the longevity of the funding. So, uh, what are we looking at in regard to that? As far as the, as far as them um, continuing to help fund any of the expenses. Well, they they have put thirty thousand dollars into that fund. Okay. We're asking for a little over eighteen thousand, so there's twelve thousand still in there. Our our my plan is to when they do the fundraising, money should go back into the community foundation to sustain that program. Okay. It's not to me. It's not a one and done. But you the know. problem is when. The fundraising stops and the fund dries up. Then where are we at? What expenses would be coming out of the account? Though? I don't know. It sounds like you've covered. Food is paid for. Event care is paid for. Equipment is a. Uh, oh, so. Go ahead, Commissioner. So I, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I apologize to the challenge you can run on everything. I couldn't hear it was a bit startled what the sheriff said. So he was saying that in order to get the funds from the foundation pay for the training that it needed to be done within what period of time? Well the, the issue right now is that is we need to get out and select the dog and have the deputy meet the dog, socialize with the dog. His training starts June 24th. So, as far as tabling that, if nothing else at this point, authorize him to go meet the dog. And if you have additional questions, we certainly will will meet your answer your questions. Who's paying for the training? It's all in this eighteen thousand. Yep. So your wages are included in that as well. He will be paid as his normal wages for the training. There will be there's no extra cost. For my part, I am completely uh, satisfied and any of my concerns have been alleviated. It sounds like this will be no cost to the county. That's our uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm very much supportive of uh, this initiative because uh, the reasons stated, namely that 
this county needs more than one officer, one canine, that, uh, in order to cover the on-call uh, time, as well as uh, I think it would be a great addendum to the school resource officers. Very much. Um, you know, and again, this is not something that is new to the sheriff's office. It's something that we're going for about 15 years or so. Yeah. Um, very much in support, and I would go ahead and make a motion that we adopt the agreement before us with the four amendments that the solicitor listed. I'll second that, but I do have a further mm -hmm. question. Are, will you be the sole handler? Yes. There is no substitute if something should happen? If something should happen, then the... Uh, it's hard to switch it off to handler. You know, after socialize with the handler, it'll be it'll live with me. You know, okay. ride with it every day. He's gonna be you know part of my family. Okay. Uh, it is possible, but it's not recommended. Okay. But the new handler would have to go through the six weeks course. Gotcha. All right. So you are the sole handler. No one else. else. Would there be liability if someone else were to come in and take care of your dog, or you know, are there issues? I'm just concerned with liability. Officer, Officer Nijlonger is also trained. He's going to go down. He's going to meet my dog. Uh, he has kennels at his house. Mm -hmm. you know, he'll be able to come and feed my dog. He'll be socialized with my dog as well. You know, in case something happens, he won't be able to take care of him. And same, you know, I'll be able to take care of canine Nick. You know, if he did. we'll be able to train together. He'll, he'll know my dog and I'll know his dog. Okay. So it's nice having somebody in the county who's been through this. You know, right. they've dealt with the, the pistols of it. You know, his self-funded. You know, he's he's kind of running me through how to do the uh, the fundraising. He hasn't used any taxpayer money as well, so I'm kind of using that as my foundation to build up. He's been very successful. Yes. Very, very successful. He has a nice fun history. Everybody loves chaos. <laughs> <laughs> and just to follow up with that, Commissioner, no other policeman or law enforcement agency will ever go get that dog and go work. Okay. That will never happen. That is a soul. Those guys are trained for that piece of equipment if you would and nobody else can That's use that I'm piece of equipment. Thank you. So. Okay. Like Last question then for you from the program or any public comment. Uh, are you committed to staying with the county? And if you leave, what happens to the dog then? I am committed. We've uh, discussed the contract, you know, for the life of you know the dog. So that's something that we're working on now. But in a certain time period, you know, usually depending on the health of the dog, which is guaranteed by the kennel, but uh, Usually seven, eight years as the life of a canine. So. Okay. Very good. It, it also benefits not only for the drug spot when we're out doing, out looking for pieces of yeah, Absolutely. We can, you know, that's a big advantage to us. Right. And again, given that the sheriff's office handles search and rescue in the county, yes, yeah. that's a big help. All right. Any other questions, comments from the commissioners? Hearing none, I'd open up for public discussion. Is there anyone that wishes to be recognized for a question or comment? Mr. Gilbert? I know that choosing the right kennel is very important. This is the same kennel that I longer use. It is. is. Okay. Yes. Okay. They're, they're very, they're now board yeah. certified. So yeah. upon completion, I'll have a national certification. So. And, and if I may comment on that, um, Officer Nyswanger, we'll just say every kennel, every canine school has its own beliefs. So if Officer Nyswarner went to Shallow Creek and he would go to Willow Grove. Totally different ways they run those dogs. And that was one of the suggestions that if this goes, they stay under the same train, the same guys, the same mindset, so that when they show up and cooperate or collaborate, they know what each other, they know their own regulations thereof. And that was part of that choice of that. I just know from speaking with Officer Nyswarner that you spoke highly of that kind of thing. And they are back to this this time frame. They've been gracious enough. Probably almost a year when this kind of started, we planted the seed that this was a big maybe, and um, they tried to work, but it's down to brass tacks because there's so many officers trying to get into that. Um, if this doesn't happen Friday, somebody else will pick a dog Friday <laughs> with a check in their hand and leave with the dog or start that training because it, it is quite the way it is. He couldn't. Um, I think this was. The earliest, but we're looking at least another year out to start this process. So it's kind of a through Oscar Nice Water a, a, a gracious favor for Shallow Do you have a desired breed? Uh, we selected a male German Shepherd. You know, their disposition is a little lower. He's going to be pre titled, so we'll have at least a year and a half of training in Holland or Czechoslovakia, wherever he comes from. So uh, he's not going to be a green dog as opposed to Oscar Nice He'll be more. Uh, 
New England for, I guess we'll say. You know, uh, Belgian Malinois are a little too uh, high strung. So, being okay. the first dog, I think a Belgian Shepherd is probably the best bet. And that's what we have before the, the Belgian Malinois. And they, they are high strung. This is a female from Pleasant Township. As, as an animal lover, you will have this dog in your home. He will retire and remain in your home? Yes, part of the contract is after the life of the canine, uh, after he's retired, uh, he would be staying with me. Very good. Thank you. Other public comment? Yeah. Mr. Scott, the training starts in June. When? What's the end on training? June 24th is the start date. Uh, August 2nd will be the end date. So it'll be six weeks, Monday through Friday training. Other questions or comments? Hearing none, the motion before us is to adopt the agreement of Shallow Creek Kennels with the four amendments that the solicitor recommended. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much, everyone, for Thank your presentation you and your dedication. <laughs> Last thing on the agenda is the personnel transaction reports. Since the last time we met, met uh, Joshua Fedorowski, the sheriff's office, went from a full time sheriff's deputy to a part time sheriff's deputy. That was effective on the 22nd of last month. And Austin Schwenke, part time sheriff's deputy, left the employment of the county on the 3rd. Christopher Kyler, on the same date, left adult probation office as an elections assistant. So here a motion to ratify the first stop transaction so report. Motion made and seconded. Excuse me, I second. Second. Never mind, Commissioner Eggleston seconded. Okay. <laughs> Let the minutes read that Commissioner Eggleston seconded. <laughs> um, I, I'm in a car that's 900 degrees, all the windows are closed. I need to be to get over. <laughs> 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 All those in favor of the motion. <laughs> Please stay aye. 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 Uh, any other commissioner aye. comments? Then I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Adjourn. <laughs> We're adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>